James Watson for Pro Boxing Fans. Delighted to be joined on Zoom today with Jason and Andrew Maloney. Boys, how are you doing? Going all right, mate. How are you going? All good, thank you, lads. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, how's it been? How are you, how you both doing? Yeah, it's going all right, man. Some pretty strange time for everyone in the world at the moment, but we're um, doing our best and trying to um, make some positives out of the, you know, a pretty horrible situation and still training hard and trying to make some improvements and just get through this and hopefully start fighting before too long. Absolutely. Now, I understand you've both gone back to doing a bit of labouring work um, during this period because, obviously, not fighting, you're not earning. Talk to you a bit about that and the... Um, the, the struggles, I suppose, of not being able to fight. Yeah, that's right. We, um, we've we done a, just a couple of days a week just to keep a bit of an income coming in while we can't fight because at this stage, there's just no real idea or clue as to how long it's going to be that we're out the ring and we've both got young families we've got to support. So we've got to keep the money coming in and keep the food on the table for everyone. Absolutely. Now, um, you both were due to fight quite recently over in America. Um, Jason, let's start with you. Your fight, um, you're supposed to be on the undercard of Inoue Casemiro uh, fighting yeah. Josh Reed Jr. Um, how frustrating has it been to miss out on that and have it postponed? Yeah, it was really frustrating. I mean, to have an opportunity like that to fight in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay, at what would have been a sold out arena and a massive card to be on that would have got huge exposure it was exactly what I wanted at this point in my career and I wanted to have a really really imp impressive performance against Josh Greer and show the whole world what I'm capable of capable of and um, hopefully earn myself a shot at the world title uh, getting after I got past Josh Greer so it was a real pivotal moment in my career and, and you know a dream come true to finally fight on such a massive show at you know, such an iconic arena. So I was really looking forward to it. We were training really hard. Everything was right on track. Well, it was actually only two days before we were about to fly out to America that we got the word that the fights were postponed. And yeah, it was heartbreaking. Jason, what's going on at the moment? Because I believe that's going to be one of the first fights coming back potentially um, in studio. So behind closed doors. Um, obviously, you guys are in Australia. Are you guys going to be able to fly over there? Is there any flight restrictions for you guys at all if you can go over well that's the big unknown at the moment which is making it really hard um it's great to see top rank and bob aaron being so productive and trying to find ways to get around this and get the fighters fighting but um with us but like you said being over in australia and travel restrictions going on at the moment well it's going to be pretty hard for us to get out of australia at the moment um we've just got to see what happens things are changing daily so hopefully they will allow some sort of travel soon, especially if you can prove that it's obviously for work, which that trip would be. You know, we're, we're professional fighters, so that's hopefully they'll take that into account, um, you know, and just get us over there. I, I know the safety safety is number one at the moment and trying to control this virus as much as they can, but um, we seem to be doing a pretty good job of it in Australia. We've just got to hope that the rest of the world continues to do a good job and we'll get through this. Absolutely. And Andrew, um, first of all, congratulations on being elevated to world champion as well. Um, talk to you about, obviously, the frustration of becoming world champion, getting to defend it for the first time, and obviously all this happening and not being able to, able to wait. Yeah, that's right. Um, this is sort of the moment that we've worked our whole, our whole, our whole life for, really. Sort of, we've been boxing for 17 years now, and working up until this moment to finally become world champion and and you know it's a dream come true to to fight over in america and headline a big show which i was going to do and defend your world title that's the sort of stuff that you dream about growing up as a as a young boxer and i finally had the opportunity to do that and um yeah two days before we we're about to jump on the plane it got taken away from me so that was devastating um but I just hope that, you know, this thing is on its way out and that it won't be too long before we're back in the ring because, you know, we're at the prime of our career now. We're 29 years old and I've just become world champion and I don't want to be sitting out the ring for too long. Talk to me about, also you were chasing Cal Your Fire for a long time. You know, the, the years that we've spoken, you've been chasing Cal Your Fire. He obviously lost to Roman Gonzalez. Is that now the fight you're looking at, Roman Gonzalez, or is there 
any anyone else that you're looking at um, potentially maybe yeah. unifying with or anything like that at all? Yeah, no, the Chocolatito fight is that would be a dream come true to share the ring with him. He's a legend of the of the sport and definitely a legend of the lighter weight divisions and, you know, has has, uh, has shined the spotlight on the lighter divisions for the last few years. So um, to be able to share a ring with him and to to beat a legend like him, like I plan on doing, that that's a dream come true. So that's definitely the fight that I want. And for you guys, realistically, when do you uh, feel that boxing will resume back to normality? I know we mentioned top rank and looking at behind closed doors and studio shows. When do you guys think the fans will be allowed back in? Because that's what they want to know. I would have absolutely no idea, mate. That's that's a real tricky one. Yeah, it's just, I suppose it depends on, on how, how quickly we can get on top of this. I think um around the world everything just seems to be changing day by day so um i suppose that, you know if everyone just keeps doing the right thing and staying inside and you know flattening the curve as they say um i think we can get on top of it and resume back to our lives as soon as we can so i think it's just important that everyone keeps doing the right thing and hopefully we can um yeah have, have the fans in attendance <laughs> before the end of the year It'd be great yeah, well nicaragua Nicaragua had a show on the weekend with fans in the audience and just had a a few seats in between each spectator and maybe that's the way it's going to go for a while. Absolutely, yeah. I think they had like a metre apart between fans. They all got screened and tested on the way in. Um, yeah. It's definitely a whole, whole different world to what it was. Um, yeah. But yeah, hopefully if we can get some fans in there, that'd be great into the arenas. A bit of atmosphere in there, especially for you guys. Yeah, well. definitely. Well, how much yeah, yeah, does it right. give you guys having an atmosphere in there? Yeah, I love fighting in front of the big crowds. And, you know, for me, when I when I was getting the big fight at the Mandalay Bay, and I, I had a good crew of Aussies coming over to support me as well. So it was something I was really excited about. And, yeah, those big stages are what, you know, what gets you excited. And, you know, that's what you dream of, to fight in front of sold-out crowds and, you know, put on spectacular performances and everyone leaves happy and wants to see you again. But um, I guess once the fights happen, even if it is behind closed doors, I think that will get a lot of people watching on TV. So you're still going to be fighting in front of a huge audience and you'll still get a good chance to, to really make a name for yourself. Um, but yeah, I mean, you just got to deal with the cards that you got at the moment. Um, obviously, I'd prefer to fight in front of a crowd, but um, yeah, if it has to be behind closed doors, then I'm all for it. Now, I want to mention a couple of um, questions I had for you, sort of a um, bit, bit random questions. Um, Jason, first of all, um, I always like to ask about influences on your careers. I believe um, Gary Farmer was a big influence on your. <laughs> uh, about, uh, Gary Farmer, who is he and how did you meet him? I'm going to ask you. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Oh, I'm not even going to be able to explain that one. It's not going to make sense to anyone in the world. So, oh. obviously, Tony Toll just stitched me up with that one. <laughs> oh, he's, he's still a few more over as well, boys. Um, yeah. Andrew, tell me about oh. finding gold in Cuba. <laughs> I knew that one was coming too. Um, so the story behind that one, Tony absolutely loves it because he only found out maybe maybe a year ago. Uh, I went over to Cuba in 2011 for a boxing camp and, and tournaments. Um, I was over there for three months all up and a crew of us, us boys obviously all went over together on the Australian team and for some reason we decided it would be a good idea to get some gold teeth. So... I had a few of my, my teeth uh, dipped in gold and, and plated. And um, I kept them in for like maybe three years or something. I don't know what I was thinking. And um, Tony <laughs> found out about that about a year ago and thinks it's the funniest thing ever. So he loves it. <laughs> and um, talk to me as well about, basically you're starting to box as well. I know we spoke about it previously on separate calls. Um, you two sort of have... And, you know, sibling rivalry, a little, um, a few scraps here and there. Talk about how you both got into boxing and why you started boxing. Clearly, at the age of 13, we loved Australian rules football. 
and our goal back then was to be professional footballers. Um, and we weren't really doing anything in, in the off season. We, we doubled around with a bit of basketball and a bit of motorbike riding and things like that. But um, we we had that love for boxing that we'd already discovered between fighting each other. And during the pre-season, we decided we'd go down to the local gym and try it out and see how we went. And um, yeah, just fell in love with the sport straight away. Um, between at the age of 16, so three years after we started training, we decided to have our first fight. Um, a few of the guys at the gym who had been with us and watched us train said, you guys should start fighting. You've got, you got a heap of potential. So we started, we had our first amateur fights and um, I lost my first three in a row. And Andrew lost his first seven. So we they got to a good they, start. They lied to us. <laughs> <laughs> and... and um, yeah, well, at that stage, I think most people probably would have given up. But we, we at that stage, had got the bug. And we just loved boxing and wanted to stick at it. So we decided that we'd quit footy um, and focus 100% on boxing. And, yeah, pretty quickly, the results changed, turned around. And we started winning, got on a bit of a run. And both of us, uh, a couple of years later, were representing Australia and going to the Commonwealth Games and, and so on. And Andrew eventually went on to win the gold medal at the Commonwealth Games in 2014 um, and then we both turned professional and decided that we'd start chasing world titles so Andrew's got his now and 2020 is my year to become world champion and as soon as this coronavirus goes away I'll, I'll um, get that belt around my waist hopefully. Absolutely and so Andrew um, you just mentioned that you lost your first seven amateur fights give us a bit of advice yeah. to anybody who maybe want to start boxing and they lose a couple and they might lose their motivation. What's your advice to tell them to keep going, really? Um, well, for me, personally, like, we were juggling playing footy and boxing at the time and probably only boxing twice a week and, and doing some footy training and still playing footy. But I wasn't – I realised then after losing seven fights in a row that I had to make a decision and, and choose one of the sports and so I could focus more on – what I was doing so I decided to quit playing footy and started boxing uh, five or six nights a week and um and really dedicating myself to the sport and um and things started to turn around very quickly once I did that so I think it's if you find a passion and you know if boxing is what you want to do you just got to dedicate yourself 100% to that sport and um and you know you, if you put in if you dedicate yourself and put in the hard work the results will pay off just how big is boxing in Australia, or was it when you was younger? Was did you guys ever watch it as kids or anything like that at all? Yeah, we um, it's not very big in Australia, um, and still isn't. Um, we're in a pretty good sort of phase at the moment where there's a lot of good young Aussies uh, coming through to the world level. Um, but boxing isn't a huge sport here. Um, AFL is the main sport, and cricket, um, and so on. So. There's a lot of other competition and, and not that many people that box. But um, growing up, Danny Green, a fellow Australian fighter um, and good friend of ours and, and mentor, um, was our favourite fighter and he was who we idolised growing up and used to watch all of his fights and, and go to them when we could here in Australia. And he's the one that really got us hooked on the sport and, and really got us interested um, in the professional scene. You mentioned that it's not it's still not to this day very a big sport or not your main sport in Australia. Does it make it harder for you guys to progress or to get fights because of that? Yeah, definitely. It's that's the real shame at the moment. It's just it's so hard for boxers at the moment. We don't get any media attention or coverage, so um, you know, there's no T V networks paying money to put the fights on or or anything like that. So I mean, for us it was especially hard. I mean, like you said, you're not getting media attention, so it's hard to get sponsorship and things like that on the way up. And then as you start progressing through your career, if you are lucky enough to have a few sponsors and can box full time, well, it's hard for you to get the quality of, of opponents that you want to fight because trying to bring someone out here and pay them what they want to be paid to come out here and fight you, really hard to get top quality opposition because there's no TV networks. There's, the promoters aren't willing you know, they can't afford to pay for that quality of opposition. So it gets to a point where we got where um, you sort of 
pretty quickly outgrow Australia. And unless you've got a stack of money behind you somehow, you're not going to be able to get the quality of opposition. So luckily for us, we were picked up by top rank and got you know a powerhouse promoter behind us who can put on the fights and give us the quality of opposition that we want to be fighting. You know, we want to fight the best in the division and we want to be fighting for world titles and for Andrew defending world titles and, you know, being on the big stage. So doing that in Australia is impossible. Does it make you sort of realise how well you have done to get to world rank number one, number three, before top rank really came in? Top rank is still very new to you guys. Does it make you, or does it show you just how good you guys are to get so highly ranked? Yeah, well, we've just got an amazing team around us. Um, even though boxing is an individual sport, you're in the ring on your own. Without a good team around you, it's just impossible to, to reach the top. So, you know, we're blessed that we've got a great team around us now in our manager, Tony Tolge, our, our coach, Angelo Hyder, and um, had some, you know, good promoters on our way up. Hoskin Promotions um, built us to where we got to the position where we were signed by by top rank. So without all those guys, you know, it wouldn't have been possible. So we, you know, we're we're blessed. And finally, before I do let you guys go, uh, just give us some words of motivation uh, for anyone who may be struggling with this lockdown in this period. Oh, I think you just got to try and stay positive and, and try and, you know, make some good of the situation. It can be hard. I know even for us, I have days where I just think, shit, when is this going to be over and when can we get back to fighting? You know, we're, like I said, we're still training every single day. So some days you're struggling a little bit for motivation, thinking I'm pushing so hard, but there's just no end goal in sight. But we just have to stay positive. This will end and we will get through this. Um, and life will return to normal. Um, we just have to stay positive. For us, um, you know, the positive that we're trying to get from this situation is that I think there's a lot of fighters out there at the moment who are probably being a bit negative and they're probably not doing any training at all. They're probably putting on a lot of weight, maybe going out, having a few beers, whatever, even if they're at home, but just doing the wrong things and not living that professional lifestyle. So me and Andrew are extremely dedicated. And I, I think at the end of this, you're going to really be able to tell who the fighters are that are the, the disciplined and dedicated fighters and who has done the right thing during this downtime. So for us, we're doing the right thing. We're, you know, eating healthy, living clean and training hard. And hopefully as soon as the fights are allowed to come back on, you'll really be able to see, uh, yeah, who the real professionals are. But, um, yeah, the main message is just, yeah, stay positive. Um, we will get through this. Take each day at a time, do the right thing and, if everyone keeps doing the right thing, well, then um, life will return to normal sooner than later. Absolutely. Boys, thank you very much for joining me today. Appreciate your time. It's a pleasure, no mate. Worries. Thanks for always supporting us. Yeah, thank you, mate. Appreciate it.